Hi, everybody. I'm Jennifer Tryon. Welcome to Winter Watercolor Wednesdays. We're here. We made it. And we need a little color in our life right now. Hopefully, you've received your beautiful pink box in the mail. Um, I know a couple people had um, uh, emailed in today asking when they were sent out. Uh, early, early last week, uh, some late the week before. Um, but if you live somewhere pretty far from Ontario, then it might have taken a little bit longer. I know someone was just emailing from the Yukon, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, further destinations take a little bit longer. Uh, but we're here, you can certainly uh, watch along tonight. And all of these classes are going to stay posted. So if uh, you miss one, or you forget, or whatever, uh, you can tune in and watch from wherever you are, whenever it's convenient uh susan just got hers 10 minutes ago nice timing susan hi donna hi Marie agnes um thank you so much for being here tonight uh we'll give everybody a few minutes to get on um please let me know if you are a first timer um a first timer to watercolor we've done one of these events before last spring uh so this is our winter version and um i'd love to know if you're joining us live for the first time tonight um, the other thing uh, we've got tonight is a link for you if you would like to, hi Kathy, um, hi Joanne, and Joanne's a first timer, all right, welcome from Wainwright, Alberta, that's great. Um, so Amanda, who's behind the scenes here, has just posted a link, um, if you would like to click in and talk to me, uh, ask a question, um, you know, whatever it is you know, watercolor related, <laughs> let's preface that. Um, then you can just click that link there. You can put your uh, name in and we can have a little uh, watercolor party. Happy to have you join in. Um, all right, we've got some first timers, some people who've done some of our quilting events, two quilting retreats. Yay, I'm glad you're trying watercolors. Amy's trying for the first time from Whitby. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I know some people have already dived into their boxes. Um, so why don't we get started, get it opened up um, so you can take a look at what is in your kit if you haven't opened it up. I've got some extra supplies floating around here. So the first thing you'll notice is um, just a little schedule um, to try to keep us on track. Uh, tonight, we're gonna prep our paint card swatches. We're gonna practice blending, do some backgrounds. Um, so that'll be fun. We've got Jennifer in as a first timer. Uh, yay, welcome. Um, on the back, it tells you what's in the kit and a little preview of some things we're going to be doing as the uh, as the week goes on, uh, the week as the weeks go on. Um, we've got these beautiful drawings um, from Urban Anna. Uh, if you haven't followed her, she's um, on Instagram at Urban Anna Twenty, and she paints a different building. Uh, from around the world um, every week. And it's so inspirational. Uh, aren't they gorgeous? Um, so we're going to be starting some of her buildings next week. And because I think it'll take us a, a couple weeks to, to kind of get through them. And um, she's going to be joining us from the Netherlands. Isn't that so cool? How, you know, this virtual world, even though a lot of us, you know, kind of fight against it sometimes, it does allow us to kind of all be you know, in the same room here together. Um, so that's really cool. And so she's going to be here uh, next week. Um, all right, let's see what else we've got. Um, right on top here, you're going to notice a few different watercolor papers in your box. So I'm just going to set that aside for now and get to some of the paints and some of the mediums. Um, this time around, we're doing a lot with liquid watercolor inks. So we've given you these liquid inks. You can get them right out of the package. Um, everybody also got um, one of these palettes uh, inside or outside of their box, inside their box. Um, this is the palette right here. I've already got mine well uh, worn and used. If you were in the spring session, you got one of these too, but we included this one free this time and I'm gonna tell you why in just a minute. Um, but you got one of these. So we're gonna get that going tonight. Um, you've got a little uh, fine line bottle. 
Um, and we'll get to when and where you can use this, but it, it looks very surgical, I gotta say. <laughs> it kind of creeps me out a little. Um, but you can use this for all kinds of things. Fine line, you can put, fill this with glue, you can fill this with any of those inks. Uh, water, if you just need a little drop. Um, anyway, useful for watercolor. You've got some uh, fresh masking tape because oftentimes we like to tape down our um, our watercolor paper because that way we you know it it doesn't uh, ripple quite as much. So you can set that aside. That's going to come in handy. Um, you've got one of these great canvas rolls in your kit, and this is for your brushes. You've also got a pack of brushes. And as you continue watercoloring, your brush collection will grow. Uh, you've got a package of brushes to get you started. If you are in our spring uh, group, then you can add the, your brushes from there uh, into this canvas. It helps them dry, uh, just pull them down. And then it's got like this little um, protector and it kind of helps dry them up Keep them flat. Try not to get them caught underneath. Um, there's some seams, so make sure you're, you know what I mean? Anyway, that's great for taking your brushes with you places. I better take these out or I'll forget where I put them. <laughs> so you've got that, uh, the canvas roll, which is uh, handy. Uh, you got some kind of paint palette. Somebody, some people got round ones and some people got uh, oval ones. So whichever one you got, um, it all serves the same purpose, just to kind of mix your, your colors. So whichever one you got, um, that's what that's for. We talked about those brushes. We've um, tried to give you brushes that are round tips and flat tips. These are what are most often used for watercoloring. Um, round tip, a round brush uh, is most often used in watercoloring, but we've got those flat tips in this package too. Um, which is great for backgrounds. And that's something we're gonna be working on tonight. Um, and then we've got lots of little tiny things too. Um, these little Tombow adhesive dots, these are for when we're putting together um, our card fronts. You've got a bunch of pre-folded cards and envelopes because even your practice watercolor um, uh, paintings, I'm sure you can make into a card front and send it off to a friend. And this is just gonna help you uh, keep those together. Do not lose these trusty tools in your kit. Um, the kit, by the way, if you're kind of looking at this going, darn it, I should have got it. We have a few left downstairs. Um, if anyone wants us to send you one, you could have it by next week. Um, we will ship it to you tomorrow. Uh, so anyway, we can put the link up for the kits if anyone is having a little bit of FOMO here. Um, anyway, you've got a water brush. And this is just as it sounds. We're going to fill this up tonight. Um, and so that's just the lid, but you can also unscrew it. It unscrews clockwise. And usually things, don't they normally, it's, it's, it goes the opposite way that you think it's going to. So you might think it doesn't work, but it just goes the other way. Um, you just fill this with water and twirl it back up the opposite way you think it should go. <laughs> and then, then this will be ready. Um, and you just squeeze and this is great for if you're water coloring on the go and you can't have water with you. Um, love that. You've also got, um, a Secura jelly roll. Uh, this is a white gel pen. Guard this with your life. Okay. These are very good pens. They've got white ink in them and they are beautiful on watercolor and or on anything that's dark for that matter. Um, you can kind of, I'll just grab like one of last time's prints, but if you were to do something, I just close this off. I know we'll get to this, but I, you know, I love these pens. So, um, and you wanted to put like little snowflakes or little highlights of something. It's just, I don't, you can't you probably can't even see that, but it's beautiful white ink. Get something, um, um, dark and you'll be able to write with white ink right on there. It's it's lovely. So don't lose that. Don't set it in the kitchen and let anyone think that it's just a regular pen. Keep that guarded. You've also got um, a Spectrum Noir art liner pen. And these pens are um, waterproof and perfect for doing uh, like highlighting or folligraphy. Um, anything like that. 
you got a little candy. You know, we wanted to put a little colorful candy uh, in here. So maybe we'll have a little treat. You've got um, a mono glue stick. Tombow mono is my favorite glue. So um, if you'd rather glue down your cards um, or your prints, uh, do you sell items on their own if we have the kit from last time? We do have some of the items on their own on, if you look under watercolor on the website. And um, uh, Marie Agnes, if you're looking for something specific, um, just write us at info at homemade.ca and we can just let you know if we have it. Uh, okay, yeah, we're, we already went over. Everyone's getting this kit, this palette. Um, and then we're getting to... <laughs> the watercolor pencils or oh, sorry the pencil crayons so we ordered as you can see these from um jane davenport and we ordered the palette from jane davenport and um i was going through all of her stuff and i was like oh my gosh but the pencils look gorgeous i'd love to be able to include a tin of pencils in the kit and so we looked at them and hemmed and haw hawed and then i wrote back and said, okay, give me the pencils. We're gonna include them too. So guess what, you guys? <laughs> so I ordered them, they arrived, and we set the big boxes full of these pencils aside until like now, um, because I have, I have watercolor pencils already out and blah, 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 anyway. And so I'm looking at them, I was like, oh, they're beautiful, blah, 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 and so then I, you know, a week or about a week or so ago, I'm like, okay, let's get everything out. We're going to start packing the boxes. I got my own kit out, started practicing. And I was like, what? These aren't working. These are regular colored pencils. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, I mean, we do still have lots of paint in our kit. Um, but these are regular and they are beautiful pencil crayons. Okay. I colored with them on non watercolor paper and they are so creamy and buttery that it made me like, okay, these are beautiful pencils, but they just don't activate in water. And so I called the company back and I was like, um, <laughs> do you think you might've told me those weren't watercolor pencils since I ordered all water? And they were like, oh, we thought you knew. <laughs> I know. Anyway, um, I am going to show you some um, tips and tricks on how to highlight with these after your water uh, color is dry. And as a little, I'm sorry for making this mistake. Um, that's why we included a free palette. And anyone that bought this palette extra, we refunded you and gave it to you for free. Um, so I hope you understand we didn't mean for that to happen. Um, but that you are sitting on some beautiful pencil crayons right now, which is fabulous and has all kinds of, you know, extra uses <laughs> um, for coloring. And as an extra little thank you for being patient with us, we've created, and everyone would have gotten the email, it went out at 7 p.m., like just 15 minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> yes, Natalie, whoopsie. <laughs> um, I sent an email with a watercolor resource page where you can download extras of what we are coloring and or what we are painting in the class. And if you download those on ultra smooth cardstock and print them on ultra smooth cardstock or even regular printer paper, then you can definitely use these again and again. Um, so you can print on extra watercolor paper or you can print on just regular paper and use these pencils. Yes, they are beautiful. Okay. That's that. Um, if anyone's really mad at me, just email us and we'll apologize again. <laughs> Info at homemade.ca. <laughs> okay, let's get on with tonight. Um, we're trying our best, folks. Um, part of what we like to do when we're starting Watercolor Wednesdays is to um, give you a little bit of knowledge on all the different supplies. So you've gotten a bunch of stuff in your kit. Uh, we talked about the round brush and the flat brush, and you're gonna predominantly be using round brushes um, when you're watercoloring. But it's also important to learn, oh, wait, I forgot a big thing that's in your kit, and that's all the printouts. 
So there's printouts and there's blank sheets in your kit. Set all the blank sheets aside and set all the printouts aside. So you've got some different sized blank sheets and you've got these, okay. So these are what we're gonna, the trees are beautiful. I mean, these are gonna make beautiful backgrounds. You can do all kinds of day, night, winter, summer. You know, something very, very easy, like a silhouette like this makes beautiful watercolor in minutes. So we're gonna work on this tonight. And then you know what? It doesn't take minutes, but it sure is beautiful. Look at these drawings. These are exclusive for us from Urban Anna we were talking about earlier. So these drawings we're going to get to next week. Um, I already started um, painting one to kind of get ahead. And look at just how gorgeous it turns out. Um, and if you're looking at this going like, nope, <laughs> there's no way I can paint that you're gonna be able to do it. We're gonna do it next week um, after just tonight's lesson um, because it really is such a beautiful, forgiving medium watercolor and um, you're, I know you're gonna have great success. Also tonight, so I'm gonna set, set aside those printouts. We've also given you a bunch of just sort of different, we've got some card fronts, florals here um, that we're going to paint in. This page is predominantly tonight where we're going to practice shading, like on the pear, on the leaves, on, what would you say these are? Blueberries? I don't know. These berries. They could be whatever kind of berries. Um, these flowers, the ice cream cones, just a little something to give you some practice on blending. And we're going to try some different techniques like what happens when I put the, just clean water down and then add some paint or what happens when it's dry and then I do it. And, and you'll get a feel for how uh, concentrated the paint really is and how you don't need very much water at all. All right. Um, any other ones? I think these are duplicates for me in case I screw up. <laughs> um, the other thing you're going to feel in your kit is um, you'll notice based on how white, and it's hard to see because I've got white on white here, but maybe you can see it a little bit better against the clipboard. This paper here is a bit creamier and this one's definitely more white. Um, yes, those, uh, someone's asking, those of us that didn't get the kit, will we be able to print it out, all those different prints? Everybody got the uh, resource page. So everybody is welcome to print out on their own uh, on their own watercolor cardstock or on their own printer paper, for sure. We're not leaving you totally hanging here. Um, but if you would like uh, the kit, um, go ahead. You can We can send it to you tomorrow and you'll have it by next week. Uh, okay, so what I was saying here is that this one looks much whiter, but it's not just the color that's the difference. Sometimes when we're shopping for supplies, you see cold pressed watercolor paper and hot pressed watercolor paper. And so we've included some of both in this kit and you can choose what you wanna use for what. Um, what if we don't have the printouts, didn't order the kit? Um, well, Lois, you can either order the kit or like I said, you can go to the link. We can put up the link again uh, now or the link actually came in your email because you have to register for the class and which I believe you did. Um, there's a second email that went out tonight, uh, right as this was starting, and that has the link to the resource page and you can download the printouts. Um, so the hot pressed paper, that's the one that is creamier and that's the one that feels smoother. Hot pressed watercolor paper is more of an artist grade. It uh, takes a little longer to dry and honestly, I don't even really like it as much. I gotta be honest. Oh, trying to order the kit and it's not working. Are they sold out? Uh, no, it should be working fine. Uh, Connie, don't worry. We can, uh, Amanda's looking you up there and she can send you a draft order and you can just complete it. If anyone else has has trouble ordering the kit, um, just message us here or you can write us at info at homemade.ca. Um, the other more rougher paper is cold press paper. It's a little less expensive and it dries much quicker and it's a little rougher. So you can decide uh, which one you want to use. Neither are right or wrong. Um, it's It really eventually will come down to preference, uh, budget, and 
if you were asking my advice, I would say you'll do just fine if you were ordering extra um, cold press paper. So if you're looking for that on the website or in your own travels, cold press paper will do you just fine. Okay, so let's start by opening our little paint palette here. And in it, you will have received one of these blank Is this the one or is this the one? I don't know if they're the same one or I think this one was rubies. My daughter did watercolor last time and I, I pulled out our little palettes. Um, so what this palette's gonna allow you to do is know what color you're dealing with. Because um, you can see there's a bunch of different greens in here. Greens are super, super popular and really do help you with mixing. There's a couple different blues, um, a couple different yellows and they correspond with um, your palette here. Um, someone's asking, if we put our watercolor paper in the printer for uh, resource pictures, what size? Eight and a half by 11? That's right. Um, I used eight and a half by 11. It goes through. You'll notice in the email and on the resource page, it does warn you, you must use a laser printer. If you print these out with a, an inkjet printer, the black ink will smear. So um, just keep that in mind. So if you need to take them to Staples or a copy center, I bet you can get them printed um, not very expensively, but you will need to give them the loose watercolor sheets um, because they often don't have watercolor paper like readily available. Or you've got a couple sheets in your kit. Um, if you want to print out more, you could save them um, and do that. So um, I won't spend a whole lot of time tonight going through and painting each one of these, but I will do um, the first little bit to kind of give you, to get you going. Because I know some of you will already have this uh, painted from last time. And it's always, you know, a little more fun to get to the actual making. But this is what it looks like when you first open it up. All the little paints come in their perfect little pots. Um, and you are aspiring for this look, not this look. So if, if this gives you a little anxiety, you're going to get to like work in some of your messy uh, <laughs> fears because this is a very normal looking watercolor palette. This is not normal. So this is, this is today only, okay? Um, and so you can unwrap each one of these. They seem like little pieces of gum, um, but yeah. Oh, we've got a, a surprised and crying face. What's wrong? Let us know. Um, you want to make sure you've got a couple of fresh jars or containers of water. I tend to like to use that use um, water jars, like jars or glasses that are clear, because you want to see just how dirty that water is really getting. Um, because at some point, your dirty water is going to start to affect the look of your paint. So you might have to change your water a few times during a session. Um, one thing that I did not include in the kit, and I'm sorry, and I should have because it would have been an easy thing to add, um, and that was just a little water squirt bottle. So if you have a, even just an empty, like any kind of empty squirt bottle that you use from the dollar store, like for laundry or something like that, um, it's a great thing to keep with your watercolors because it instantly is going to activate your whole palette. Just give it a few little spritzes. Don't worry if it's kind of pooling there. The paint is meant to absorb uh, lots of water. I mean, don't drown it, but you know what I mean? You can spritz it all at once. If you don't have a little uh, mister, no big deal. You can just dip. And I'm just using the, like a, one of the smaller flat brushes for this. And I'm going to take my brush and just do my first stroke just like this that kind of shows me the true color when it's mixed with water. Now, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse my brush, leave my brush pretty wet. I kind of like to tap it on my hand. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just float this over. And you can take it back and, and kind of get that uh, pigment right on the edge again, and then just leave it. Let the water do the work. You do not need to paint over at all. 
we're really going to practice here restraining ourselves. And then we're going to go to the next one. I'm just going to put down a line of ink. I'm going to rinse off my brush with just water. I'm going to let it float over. And I'm going to let that water do the work. If you want, you can go back in with an even more saturated, just right at the edges, but leave it alone then. Let the water carry that color over so that you get a good look at what it's going to look like when it's really pigmented and when it's really loose, when it's really, you know, watered down. So the water really allows you to have so many different variations of these colors without having to have, you know, every single one of those colors, every single shade. And not only that, you can see in the lid here, there's lots of blending going on. Ooh, look at that nice blue. Rinse. And I'm just gonna bring this over. If your brush is too dry, you'll know because the pigment won't spread all the way down whatever stroke you're doing. Just means you need to leave a little more water on your brush. Okay, I'll just do the next two and then we'll, we'll keep moving and you guys can keep going. Orange. And you know, it's nice and dark and pigmented. And then, you know, you really can get it very, very light. And if like this, for example, on this orange, I kind of put a little too much water, you know, you're gonna keep little pieces of paper towel, just little corners around. And don't be afraid to let the corner, like watch what happens here. It'll just sop that right up. It's very forgiving. So if you get a little too much water down, and you'll know when you do, um, go ahead and if it, if it feels like it's pooling, just take a little tip of clean or a little tip of paper towel and bring it right up. And then I'm just gonna go back. I'm not gonna paint over it. I'm gonna go back with my pigmented and I'm gonna let the water carry it over. I'm not gonna like continue to stroke it. If I was to continue to stroke, and I'll just, I'll just show you right now on this little scrap piece. So let's say I've got that orange, just like that, nice and pigmented, okay? And then I'm doing what I said I was gonna do and, and cleaning off my brush and letting the water do the work. But okay, it's a little dry there because I'm getting some breakup. So I added more and now I've added too much water and it's starting to pool. Okay, maybe I'll take some of that off. And then I'm going to like try to stroke it again. Once this dries, you're going to see that it's overworked. What you want with watercolor is for there to be a bit of distinction between that pigmented. Now, I, I just added that pigment again. Let's let that water over the next few minutes creep over to the other side. This is not a fast one. It needs to do its creeping on its own. If I was to just like put it down here and then do all the creeping myself like this. Well, I'm going to end up with something that is all the same color. You're not coloring in like you would with markers. Do you see the difference between this one kind of coming over and taking its time? Don't worry, Deborah, we're here. You're, you're, you're just in time. And then this one that just look, I mean, it's still nice. It's still fine. No one's going to like, you know, get you in trouble. But if you like that look of the watercolor, kind of doing some of that work, um, you need to exercise that restraint and stop yourself from coloring all the way in like that. Now, when we get to doing some of the buildings, on the other hand, we're going to talk about coloring in, but as a base coat and then coming back 
as a second, third, fourth layer um, and building on that base. So that's a different technique. But in general, we're kind of avoiding coloring in. We're going to let that float over on its own. All right. Um, don't be afraid if your um, paints start to look like mine where I've got like a little bit of orange on the top of my yellow. It's not wrecked or anything. You just add a little bit of water and get it back. You won't even notice uh, that the orange was there. It's going to come out nice and perfect. All right, let the water carry that over. A little more pigment just at the edge. Looking good. Okay, I'll let you guys continue um, creating your palette. The next thing we'll do is you, if you want, you can create a palette of your own out of the liquid inks. And I'm gonna caution you with these liquid inks. You need very little. The last thing you wanna do is take your uh, palette and fill it to the brim, like squirt it like and squirt half the bottle into your, because then you can't put it back in the tube, okay? Um, we're gonna use this very sparingly, but we can create our own palette using the liquid inks too. Um, and so you could just take a scrap of um, watercolor paper, or if you didn't want to waste perfectly good watercolor paper, which I wouldn't wanna waste. If this is all you've got that came in the kit, I would turn my palette around and just put a few little marks um, on the back side of this um, legend, and I would use it that way just to just to save a bit of paper. I've already got a scrap one here, but that's what I'd suggest for you. If um, I wouldn't waste a good piece of watercolor cardstock, but let's open up some of these and get a look at them. I'm starting with watermelon, and be very careful. This is. <laughs> like it's really highly pigmented ink. So I'm just gonna put like two drops down. Put the lid back on so you don't inadvertently squeeze it and have it come out and set it aside. I'm gonna take each one and put two drops. Next I've got Mermaid Tail. Cute. They've got great names for sure. Next up, I've got hydrangea. And if you've watercolored before, you may be uh, new to um, using liquid inks. And that's what's kind of cool about the, these kinds of things. You can, you know, try out some different things without having to like heavily invest. And so this one's Berrylicious. Ooh, it looks neon. Ooh. Yes, you, you can almost soak up every inch of color. All right, next up, I'll show you. We've got fairy floss, Aww, so cute, fairy floss. And don't be afraid to use your paints in combination. Um, you don't have to do a painting just with these and then another painting with only those or another painting with just watercolor pencils. If you got our subscription box uh, this year, you have watercolor pencils in that, in your very first box. So you could go and break those out and add them to your collection here. All right, we've got Frida Cherry now. Cool names. So, um, you may want to take one of your markers and I probably should have written them down as I was going, but I didn't, but that's what you should do if you're, if you're building the legend. So you know, which one is which. So the first one I had was watermelon. So I'm going to, and this doesn't have to be fancy you guys, and you can make a, a block or, or not, whatever you want to do watermelon and then next up it was mermaid's tail i think it was actually tail like yep before i spell it wrong um and then next up was hydrangea
And then uh, we had, which is that purple one? Berrylicious. Oh, my blocks are getting totally smaller. <sighs> And then we had fairy floss. So you guys, you can tell I do not have good handwriting. Um, so when we get to the brush lettering part, we always end up doing a little brush lettering um, with watercolor because they seem to go hand in hand so well. Um, you'll know that um, I'm right when I say you can turn any chicken scratch into beautiful handwriting because I'm like what okay again I'm going to take um, one of my uh, flat brushes I'm going to use the other water jar I've got here keep a little paper towel on standby for a little over if I overdo it actually you want to know what because these are such small dots I'm going to take my very smallish brush and what I'm going to do here first with the clean water with my flat brush is I'm gonna, with clean water, just add water to each of these, well, the first three squares. I don't wanna get too ahead of myself because this is cold press paper. Um, so it, it dries really fast. So I'm gonna just take the very first one, watermelon. And just in the corner, I'm just gonna add a strip of watermelon. No, you cannot use cardstock. It has to be watercolor paper. Um, if you used cardstock, it would be just like using printer paper. Eventually, you would get a hole in the paper. It would start to pill. Um, okay, you can see some movement happening here. So you want to use definitely want to use watercolor paper. So we don't have quite enough water. Can you see on the computer where the that comes up? I then I can yes. Um, so we don't have enough water down here. It's not taking it all the way over. So I'm gonna add just a little more water and, and see if we can get this to get moving a little bit more. And we can kind of see that we can go from super, super concentrated to super, super light with that very concentrated ink. So I'm just gonna add a little more water on the next block, make sure we've got a lot as a vehicle. And then we're gonna pick up some mermaid's tail and oh there we go look at that watch it'll just spread i don't even need to do any painting i just need to put that pigment down and watch it kind of go and if you want you can hurry it along but it's nice to just let it the water pick it up rinse off your brush make sure you've got lots of water on the next block and and just let it go um you can see up top here see how i added water the second time See how it's pooling back and kind of not giving me that great look. Remember I said with the orange, let the water do the work. Don't go in and muck around with it. This is mucking around with it. This, as it makes its way over, is letting it do the work. So you've been warned. All right, hydrangea. Ooh, look at how concentrated that one is. Beautiful. All right, very delicious. Oh, I still have, okay, here's a good example. I still have a little bit of that blue on my brush. So I'm gonna take some paper towel while it's still wet and not rub, but dab and pull up. There you go. That paint is now on the paper towel instead of on your paper. So absolutely, um, you can be doing that. My water is very blue and very dirty, but we're still gonna go for it. All right, next up, Berrylicious. And then maybe I put a little less paint on my uh, brush this time. Ooh, it's very satisfying to have it float over like that. And you know what, you can do something like, you know, have another color meet, like start on this side and then see what happens when it gets to the middle. That's kind of a cool, you know, technique too. And, I'm kind of messing up my legend here, but that was irresistible. <laughs> All right, fairy floss is next. This one's the lighter one. Still nice and pigmented on the edge. Let it make its way over. 
And then we've got Frida Cherry here. Lots of water down. Ooh, nice. And now that you've got this sort of base coat down on each one of these, you could go back in with a drier brush and just pick up a little bit of pigment and you can just put it in the corners or on the end um, where that water was. This red one is like, I messed it. I'm just gonna activate it and let it see if I can help it out. But if you wanna you know, get a true representation of how far it can go, and add a little more pigment just on the one end so you can really see how dark you can get it. You can see in the middle there how it's making its own purple color. It's kind of cool. This one's still pretty wet, but you can get it pretty dark on the sides. Very delicious. And so you can see just those two drops of paint from those bottles. And I've still got plenty on my palette to work with probably for the rest of the night. So um, don't be in a rush to fill up your little ink wells um, with all of the paint. You know, this paint could last you years and years and years, you know? And then I'll just go a little more pigmented on the red. And it's just nice to see how just adding a little bit of that pigment and with a little bit of a drier brush can really take, because technically your square is still wet. So it's gonna, it's gonna travel a little bit, but don't stroke it. Let the water bring it over and see how, see how it works. And yeah, well, that just went all over my shirt. So that's good. I was gonna wear an apron tonight, you guys. And I thought, no, I don't need to. But sure enough, 743, first, uh, first color uh, drip. Not too bad, actually. Okay, I'm going to set this over there to dry. Does not need to be fancy, just needs to be functional. And a little sort of, um, you know, it's a, it's a reference and a little bit of play to see how the water is moving. So speaking of play and, and seeing how the water gets moving, let's, Sometimes it's kind of, you know, it's a little boring to spend too much time, you know, setting yourself up. Let's get to painting something because that's that's why we're really all here. So I'm going to start with the pear and we're going to talk a little bit about blending, just like we did on those those colors there um, on our legend. So I'm going to take the medium round brush and, you know, it's clean and I'm just going to kind of like just give myself a little practice kind of how it bends when it hits the paper before before I get water on it because you'll see that it really kind of fans out nice and straight even though it it's called a round brush but it it's really kind of pointy on the end um, but it does give you a nice rounded brush when you put some uh, weight on it so you can use it for very tip 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 um, but also to get very, very thick stroke. So what I'm going to suggest we do here is get some fresh paper towel. And Amanda, would you mind switching these out? That'd be helpful. Thank you. I would also suggest getting someone like Amanda. <laughs> we'll just change your water for you. Thank you so much. I know there's never enough, never enough clean water. Okay. So what I'm going to do with this pair first is I'm going to take water and I'm just going to color. What's that? No, no, no. Um, I'm going to just cover the pair in water. Now Amanda took even my dirty water. So I'm going to actually take my water brush, which I filled up. Did I fill that up earlier? I'm sure I did. I'm sure I filled one of them up. Come on. What do I do with my mister? I could use the mister. Because I just need some water. So just plain water 
right on the pear. And you, you don't want it, you want it to be kind of juicy, but not dripping. Like it's wet if you were to touch it with your fingers, but it's not dripping outside the lines. In fact, you don't want it to go outside the lines. If you go outside the lines, get some paper towel and swipe it because wherever the water goes, that's where the paint is going to go. And you can kind of see on this drawing here that the artist has kind of put a line here where there's probably some, some light or some movement and same with here. So um, we could preserve the highlight kind of in the belly of the, of the pear. And what that means, preserving the highlight, is keeping it lighter uh, in the middle where the highlight would be, where the sun would hit it. It's called preserving the highlight. So let's go in with a little bit of a green shade. Make, we can use either our liquid or um, our palette, whichever, whichever you fancy. I'm going to use the palette here. And I'm going to go in with a, you know, pretty bright green, but you know, pears are sometimes like a bit of a greeny yellow, right? So let's, let's take um, part of our palette and mix a little. Let's take a little bit of green and just a, just a brush stroke and put it in one of the wells or in one of the big parts. Um, take a little bit of yellow and add a little bit of yellow to it and, and see if you get a green that's more pear-like. The other thing we could do is put a little base coat of yellow and then go in with a green. Now this is turning very lime green. Right on my palette, I'm getting too much lime green. I don't know if you can see it there. So even on my paint palette, you can go in and just with your paper towel, pull that right up if you're not liking how that mix is going. And save your big mixing for you know for your actual on your actual paint palette. Okay, so let's. I'm gonna put some water down here. Make sure my water's not getting dry on my pear. And I'm gonna go in with a little bit of yellow. And I'm not gonna mix the green yet. And I'm just gonna let. I'm just gonna do like a bit of a base coat of yellow right around the pear. Already it looks like the sun's hitting it. Already that pear looks fatter and like, you know, kind of juicier just by leaving the middle alone, preserving the highlight. And so now I can go in with a little more pigment from either right from my paint or I can take it off my palette and just at the corners. But, you know, I could also go in with a bit of, a bit of green and see what See what that does. And you don't have to go in everywhere. In fact, it's going to look the most lifelike if you don't. It's going to look the most like it's ripening if you just exercise a little bit of restraint. And like, you know what, that could be kind of done. You know, it's, it's not, not too hard. So what we're going to do is with clean water only, we could just add a little bit of water in the middle so that the colors start. See how it's kind of happening right before your eyes? It kind of, and it looks even brighter. I'm looking on, on the monitor too, and it, it looks even brighter. But in real life, it looks, you know, a little bit deeper. And then we could let this dry and we could go and do the exact same thing again. Or we could bring a little more green to just maybe the base where it might be getting a little extra ripe. But we want to make sure it doesn't look like someone's just put a line. We want the water to do a bit of work. And if you want, you could help it along. But often if you just leave it and let it dance around a little bit there, you'll be happy with the result. If it's feeling like, oh, I kind of liked it a little more yellow, just add a little more yellow. So let's let that dry for right now and see, you know, in like three or four minutes where we're at. And maybe we'll do another wash and then it'll deepen the colors even more. But for a first go, it's not bad. 
and it certainly wasn't too hard. It definitely looks like a realistic painting of a pear when you think about preserving the highlight. So think about that in everywhere, even every leaf is gonna have somewhere where the highlight can be preserved. Think about where the light might hit it. And it's probably in the fattest, like most, uh, the part of the object that protrudes the most. So if I'm looking at this berry, you can kind of see where it would be because especially in this drawing here, it's already been preserved for us. Like the highlight is preserved. There's some shading right here. So that's where we'll just have plain water and try not to put much paint. Or we'll do a very faded wash and then go in with the pigmentation around the sides after. But for right now, let's, let's do it with the leaf because we can finish off our pear here. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm gonna add clean water everywhere. And then the leaf, I think we can just have it go from green to greener or, or from light green to dark green kind of thing. So I'm going to take a very different tone of green, more like this first one here, much more of an, and always, I would never really go from my palette directly to my page. Always go from your palette to something else first. A, it helps you test the color and B, it just takes a little bit of the paint away. You, you, you always need a little less than you probably put on there. And so just in the corner, I'll let that kind of do its thing. And then we'll revisit that. I'm resisting the urge to color it all in. It does look like it's pooling a little bit, like maybe add a little too much water. So just with the corner of the paper towel, I could pick some of that up. But let's let that dry too and see where it ends up in just a few minutes. Okay, speaking of leaves, let's try these leaves here. Or would you rather do the berries? What do you guys think? Somebody tell me which they'd rather see, the leaves or the berries? I kinda wanna do the berries. Somebody say berries. <laughs> okay, let's just do the berries, who cares? Um, all right, so I'm gonna make these berries red, or maybe we can make them blue. What do we think, red or blue? Thank you, Donna, berries. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> Thank you, Lois, berries, berries. Um, let's make them red, like they're as though they were Christmas berries, let's just say, even though they don't look like Christmas berries, but whatever. This time what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna um, bring my, uh, I want to make sure you guys can see what I'm what I'm doing here. Um, I'm just going to bring my red down onto my paint palette here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just color this entire berry in, even the highlight, you guys, even the highlight, because um, I just want you guys to see what happens here when we when we just go ahead and do it. It looks like all kind of one color. Like, so now what we're going to do is we're going to let that dry, okay, and go on to our next berry. So I'm just going to pull up again a little bit more. This time I'm just going to add a very light layer, kind of almost dry, um, just on the edges kind of where the drawing has the shading. And preserve that highlight. Wash off my brush and then with just water, kind of come in and let them kind of merge. I'm gonna do that with this one too. Now, I would actually work on every other berry, let this one dry while we work on this one. And it's okay if it's super light. This time, a whole light wash over the entire berry. Because we're just trying three different techniques here. A whole, a light, light wash over the whole berry. Then go in with your pigmentation and just in those where it kind of has that shading, 
bring in your color and then just let it work. This one I'm putting that pigmentation, a little bit of water. And then we'll see where it takes us. I have a little bit of pooling. It's not, it's not wrong to use the paper towel. Use it. You'll be glad you did. And don't forget, if you're getting pooling, wipe a little bit of water off from your brush. And very often with watercolor, your first, your first layer is not your last layer. Um, often watercolor looks best when you build on it. So let's let these dry for um, a few minutes and we'll go back in and do those leaves and we'll do the second layer um, and we'll, we'll keep going. Let's, let's move over to um, the flower now. And for the flower, let's use some of the liquid ink. Um, maybe the Berrylicious. So now I've dipped that right in the, the pigment. It's super uber pigmented. You can see it like on the, on the palette here. So if I were to bring that in, it, it's just too strong um, to lay all of that down on that one leaf. So this would definitely call for, let's put a little bit of water down and let's take it one petal at a time. So just a very light, you know, I even still have some on my, on my brush, a very light, light all over. I can do a couple leaves that, or a couple petals at once. Very light pigmentation. And then let's go in with just at the base and let it, and just let it grab just where it would, it's like magic, I know. And this is why you don't need to be like a super, you don't have to have a PhD in fine art to let the darker color merge with the lighter color. It just takes a little bit of water. So this is where I hope you're kind of going like, wow, I think I can do this. And then just take another little bit of pigment and lay it over top and start building. Just start building on, because this water is, it, it, the paint is sort of racing each other, so to speak. And it's like, this one is further ahead of this one that's a little further behind of that one as the water starts to dry. So it's only gonna go so far. But that makes it look super natural and the way a flower might actually grow. And now it looks even a little more stark um, on the camera, but in real life, it, it, it's actually blending pretty, pretty nicely here looks a little whiter, but it really is kind of a light pink on the, uh, if you can. Now, when we let that dry all the way, if it's too stark, we can come back to it, do another light wash once it's dry, and then do that process again. So let's do the other uh, petals here. So I've just got almost nothing on my brush. Basically, I just took the, um, I cleaned the brush off from the, the pigment and there was still just enough on the water to come in with, with the other leaves or the other petals. And then pigment. And do each petal on their own for especially these parts because each, each petal would have its own bit of growth in real life. And then there's some that are kind of behind here. We can kind of add a little bit there and maybe there. And then just leave it alone for a few minutes. Let it dry. How's our pear doing? Still, don't try not to put your finger right on it, but you, I can tell by looking it's still wet. So, but I can also tell by looking a few of our berries, especially this one is dry. So I'm gonna go back with the red. Remember, touch it to something. And very lightly do a, on that one, do a whole other base coat, just with the red. Kind of build on that. And then 
come back with my brush and a little extra pigmentation just where the shadow would be and let that work. And then when you're comparing the two berries, this one is starting to look a lot more rich, but resist the urge to, to fill it all in. Okay, just with water. I'm gonna add some water everywhere on this one. It's kind of making even the highlight a little deeper, but when I go in with my extra pigment now, that highlight is gonna look lighter again, even though the highlight is actually richer than it, than it really was. And then we're just gonna let that dry. You can see, like, maybe we can zoom in even more, can we, Karin? Um, the difference between the one that we just colored in at the beginning all the way compared to the um, variation in color between first coat like this berry and overall pigmented, looks just like you just colored it in, and the ones that are starting to layer up the, the color. So that one's pretty well dry too. So I'm just going to go with some, a clean brush. And then a little more pigment here. Remember, we're still preserving that highlight as much as we can, because that's what's going to make it look extra lifelike. <laughs> I know, they do end up looking 3D for sure. Okay, so if I'm going, coming back to my flower, it's looking it's like it's dried and like it kind of stopped here, like it kind of stopped running. That's fine. I'm going to go in with some clean water and let's just add another and then we can go with our pigment and just let it pick it up again. Layer it up and it'll start to get deeper and a little richer and a little less like it just dried like a stain on, on the paper. Layering it up is very, very key with lots of these. Pigment. And if you're not getting enough movement, if it's all just kind of sticking right at the bottom, you just need to use a little bit more water. And you don't necessarily have to wait for it to all dry. Just come in with some clean water and it'll, it'll kind of start to grab hold but don't let it, see how it's pooling there? That's gonna make like a big blob, like it's gonna dry a little extra colorful at that end. We don't want that, that's, that's too much pooling. So we can lift that up, that's fine, corrected. No big deal. Oh, I just put my wrist on my pair. <laughs> well, it's okay. A little clean water. Clean is relative. <laughs> and then extra pigmentation. Satisfying. How's everyone doing out there? Are you guys just kind of using this as a, a little like, huh, watching? Is anyone painting along too? Let me know what you're doing at home. Are you watching and then painting later or are you guys painting too? It's quiet, yeah. All right, it's growing. The leaves are, or the petals are definitely blooming here. And you know, the petals that are a little further to the back, let's say, like this one, could have extra pigmentation, whereas the ones that are a little further forward, um, could have a little less. I'm just going to make it look a little more lifelike. Um, the ice cream cone is a good example of um, preserving the highlight too. Because there's no real, sorry, I'm going to, there's no real like shadowing on here. But if we were to think about where the thickest or kind of most um, the fattest part of the area, the one that protrudes the most, um, 
is right here in the middle. And so let's take some sort of delicious, I'm gonna take some fairy floss, just the pigment, and I'm just gonna stroke it inwards towards the middle. Okay, just like that. Now this does not look good, but that's all right. We're, not, we're, we're doing this in stages. This looks like you painted the sides and nothing else. But that's because we're practicing preserving the highlight. So I've just gone along the edges. I have kind of come out of the lines, but whatever. And then... I've got a little extra pigment here. I probably don't need quite that much. So I'm just going to pick it up because you don't want pooling. Pooling is just going to take longer to dry. It's just going to mess with things. So if you see it pooling, just pick some up. You know what I mean? There's still plenty on there. You, it, the color hasn't changed at all. Um, oh, Kathy's saying, I'm making lots of comments, Jen, but I'm pretty amazed. <laughs> I've not seen this in action before. All right. So now with clean water, and in fact, I'm going to kind of switch to a smaller, my smallest brush here, because this is a pretty small, and that's why I'm getting like a little extra water on there. So with just clean water, I'm going to just go ahead and paint the middle with that clean water. And eventually, those edges are going to catch up to where I am. And the highlight has been preserved. You didn't have to color in each edge or each ripple of the cone, each swirl. The, high, the sun isn't going it's, to, it's going to hit it right down the middle. And then we can go back with our pigment if we want. And just a little bit more on the edges. We need it to be a little stronger. And it's like the light has hit that in all the right spots. So this swirl cone is a little more difficult because A, it's small and the swirls are kind of everywhere, but there's still, there's still what you know would be big plump parts right in the middle here. So let's just do a different color, um, like maybe like we'll do the purple. I'm going to just right underneath. And because this one has finer lines, just going to bring in. The other place I think that the highlight would hit is, is kind of where it's coming up here, because that would be a little bit lighter too, I think. So just coloring in the edges, maybe underneath. And then again, with just clean water, just start in the middle and let it kind of make its way together. And remember, you don't like it right off the bat. Just bring in a little bit more and let it pick it up. Oh, I put in a lot there. And that highlight, wherever you, now it's kind of, I'm kind of overworking it and getting, okay, so I've overworked it. It kind of looks like it's all starting to become one color. That's fine. This middle can still be a preserved highlight. All you have to do, let it dry. And then come in with just your deeper shades along the edges or along where those swirls are. So we'll let it dry and then we'll come back, we'll come back to it. Let's take a look at the pear because the pear is, 
yeah, the pear is dry now. The pear looks very realistic. You know, it's a good mix of yellow and green. Even though we didn't mix yellow and green on our palette, we waited and brought the yellow and green together on the page um, rather than mixing it um, on the palette. So we could come in if we wanted and give it another wash with clean water, but I think it's looking pretty good. Um, I don't necessarily think we have to uh, mess with it. Um, if you wanted it to be a little extra um, green along the edges, you could. But I'll leave it to you to, to go ahead and do a full other wash and, and add a little more yellow, add a little more green and let it, and still continue to preserve that highlight. The berries um, go in with a little clean water, a little more red. Just being sure that we're preserving the highlight. So you guys can continue painting these. Um, I can go in with a little bit of green here and the same kind of philosophy right where it's already kind of a little bit darker lay down some some darker green and we'll preserve that white that highlight for clean water go in with a bit of clean water and let it pick it up And really what you're doing by preserving the highlight is blending and shading. A little too much water. So now even though all of these are sort of on one sheet, um, feel free if you're particularly proud of one or, you know, like I'm, I'm kind of liking this pair here. I'm going to fill in a little more of that green, a little bit of clean water. See, it was a little too much. You can just pull it right up. Um, feel free to take a paper trimmer. You could cut any of these out. Put it on a card front, just kind of set it around after it's dry. Yes, not right this second, that's for sure. All right, let's set some of these um, aside for now because you've got lots to work on there. And we're already 814, but I do want, I'll just do one other thing um, because you can work on these as, as the week goes on. Um, and that's, let's do at least one background tonight. Um, and then I'll I'll leave you to play with the rest of them. Um, before you do any of these backgrounds, I would strongly suggest cutting these out. Um, ideally, you could cut it with um, a paper trimmer um, rather than scissors. You'll have much more success in keeping it uh, straight, even with a paper trimmer. Sometimes I'm off, but um, paper trimmers are worth their weight in gold. Love a good paper trimmer. And it's just gonna allow you to section these off into individual paintings. And they can be card fronts, they can be paintings, they can be practice, it doesn't matter, whatever you wanna do with them. And I'd suggest if you have an old clipboard, um, you could lay it down on a clipboard or you can just do it on your table, whatever you like, but you've got uh, tape in your kit um, and this would be a good time to use it and just tape this right down. And I'm leaving a little bit of a, a white border because that kind of looks cool when it dries and it comes off to have that bit of white. 
like the paint didn't make it all the way to the end. And I want you to think about when you're doing backgrounds now, not necessarily about preserving the highlight, although you could, but about letting that water carry over as a wash. So, Amanda, what do you think? Do we do morning sky or night sky? Okay, morning. So we'll do some sort of oranges and yellow kind of like a sunrise. If it's been, It feels like it's been so long. <laughs> We're in the dark, dead winter. Um, so I'm just getting my, my yellows and my orange kind of on my uh, palette here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my big brush that has water on it. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a clean layer of water down the entire thing. This is why it's important if you're printing out any extras of these that you use a laser printer um, because you don't want that black to smear. And it's also why you tape it down when you're doing a wash like this so that you don't get that bubbling as this begins to dry and that water begins to get absorbed into the paper. Now, I'm going to quickly go in with one of my colors, the darkest color, which will be the orange. Well, it might even end up being red, but I'm going to go with an orange and I'm just going to go straight across here. Just straight across. Okay. I'm just going to see, and then we're going to clean my brush. Now I'm going to go in with a red and just at the bottom, just very lightly at the bottom, straight across. Let's go in with like a little bit of a deeper yellow, straight across. And see where I had some green in my uh, paint palette there, straight across. And look at what's starting to happen here. I mean, that's just three brush strokes, you guys. It already looks so good. We did nothing. It's just three, like, I mean, look at how talented we are. <laughs> look what we were able to master. Let's call a spade a spade. It's pretty easy to do. And then let's just go in with a, the, a lighter yellow. Like, um, I'm really going to clean this off because I really don't want to have... Um, I want it to be like pure yellow and then a little bit lighter. Okay. And then let's just water that yellow down a little bit more. So I'm adding a bit of water to my palette. And even with just that was what was on my brush, just diluting what was on my brush even because we really want it to come up to nothing. Let's get a little clean water again. And then just what was on my brush, it's diluted even more. You can see how it diluted. And then that's it. Don't touch it. Resist the urge to go back over it. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm warning you. If you want it to dry, just leave it alone. Now you can, you can kind of mix it a little like this. I've got a little pooling going on on the one side here. So I'm going to try to get that off of there. Um, but just leave it alone. In fact, I'll leave this right now as we say good night. Um, because I just want you, if you're doing this wash tonight to leave this until the morning and it's going to be much, much lighter in the morning. In fact, it might be so light that we can do a whole other second coat, um, with the same like orange, a little bit of red, yellow, Notice that I did that orange first because I didn't want the red to come too far up. I really, the, the orange is where, the, you know what I mean? Anyway, it really does look like the sun and, and, you know, a pretty quick and easy way to achieve a really kind of fantastic result. And then go ahead, if you don't end up doing a second coat, um, go ahead and pick, you know, one of your, your pre-folded cards and... Probably by the time 
I get this. Uh, yeah, there we go. Um, so decide where you think it's going to look best. It might look nice on like a navy. It'll really like pop. Kind of looks like the tape. Um, but you could put it on a yellow or a red uh, or an orange. Would look great too. You know? Nah. And once you know it's dry and you peel that off, then you kind of get that cool, like white edge. Well, some of it kind of sept it or was seeping in. Really, I should have waited till it totally dried, but. So once this totally dries, you can either leave that raw edge because it kind of looks authentic and you know what I mean? Or if you wanted to paper trim it off so it went all the way to the edge, I like the white along the side. It kind of shows that I've painted it, uh, which is kind of cool. And then go ahead and you can use your little glue dots or your glue stick and um, you'll have something beautiful. Oh, I need to trim it down a little bit because it's a little bit uh, bigger than I should have done that beforehand, which is trim it down slightly. Okay, rewind, <laughs> trim it down so you know it fits on the card front that you want. Um, but yeah, you get, you get the idea. I'm gonna let this dry anyway. So have a little play with that now until you go to bed tonight. Um, if you wake up in the morning and it's feeling a little too muted, then we can go over it again and we can uh, take a look at it next week. But I think if you follow some of those tips about letting the water do the work, trying to resist uh, over stroking the paints, like some of you, if you've painted with acrylics, will be very used to like, no. Mm -mm. This is just <sighs> done. Okay. We're not, we're not going to overstroke it. And we're going to work on preserving the highlights. Now, when we're doing a, a, a wash like this, we have preserved the highlight. It's just up here, you know. Um, but when you've got an object like this, we're going to kind of find the thickest part that protrudes. And, and same with the tips are all, you know, the highlights kind of preserved there. Same with the middle of the ice cream cone. And when it kind of goes awry, look at the two different ice cream cones, and it's too much of the same color, it just looks like you colored it in with a marker. Same with that berry versus the one where you've deliberately preserved the highlights. Any questions? Yeah. Go back in and paint the tree once it's Which, this one? Yes. Would you put leaves and stuff yeah. on it? Mm -hmm. You could. You certainly could. That's a great idea. Um, you definitely want to wait until it's totally dry um, because otherwise you'll have the leaves kind of going out. So if we, if I had my heat gun, I could, and I could, but maybe next week we could start with that. Or feel free to, I think it feels a little dry up here. If you wanted to bring um some leaves to it but try not to be too deliberate about it like try to make it kind of scattered do you know what i mean and a little bit wet so that it maintains that watercolor look i like it without the leaves too kind of barren but you decide what works for your painting it all looks good. If you're going to draw your own picture, what type of black pencil would you use? You have to make sure, yeah. Um, if you're going to do something like this on your own, uh, on plain watercolor paper, you would go ahead and do the background first. And then if you had a stamp, you would want to make sure that you're using archival ink or um, um, the... Oh my gosh, why the Tombow Sukoneko, it's waterproofing, basically. I can, I have, I think it came in the uh, subscription box. Um, what type of black utensil would you use? Um, and then you can go in afterwards with any kind of black marker, as long as it's already dry and you're not going to wet it again. So if you have um, a fine line marker, uh, like one of these, and you wanted to even like to sign your name or put your initial on it, um, you can go ahead and go up with your black marker. If a tree feels a little like, you know, too difficult, um, like a, a barren tree, like a winter tree with no leaves on it might be a little bit easier. 
Um, definitely if you have stamps and can just stamp something in black is great. Um, the other thing you can do with these kinds of washes is just something like easy, like this kind of thing, where you just kind of splotch it in the middle and maybe you put it on a card front and you just use your own handwriting. Um, if you have a, a brush pen, you could do something like write the word friend. And then, and then maybe just do with like a, a skinnier tip, like just in your own, remember I told you I had bad writing? <laughs> Hello friend. And then you could just put this in the mail. Um, and it's beautiful and it doesn't take much time at all. Um, but it's all in you know, a bit of the technique. If you guys are into the brush lettering like this, we're going to do something like a free brush lettering in the same way we'll do like a watercolor Wednesdays very, very soon. Um, we just got to, we're just sourcing the stuff. Um, but I know you guys have been wanting to do brush lettering for a little while because it really is like, you will be able to write like this. You saw, this is my writing, you guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right here is my real writing. Um, and you, like, I just wrote that too. Uh, yeah. So that's something that you can also do with just a plain little watercolor background with having a little bit deeper with that water, clean water wash and then letting the water take over, um, just like that. Yeah. Well, I hope you've had fun tonight. I hope you learned a little bit or maybe been inspired. Um, if I hope you got out whatever watercolors you have, whether it's from the kit or whether it's been buried in a drawer somewhere for years, even if your watercolors have sat and sat and sat, all it takes is a little water, brings them right back to life. So, hey, we could all use a little bit of coming back to life. And, you know, this is fun. A little something new, a little something different on a Wednesday night. Next week, we are going to be joined by uh, Urban Anna. Her name's Astrid, but Urban Anna 20 is where you can find her on Instagram. And she's going to be with us live from the Netherlands. And we are going to be painting Autour de France next week. Um, it's one of the three buildings that she has drawn for us. And I'm guessing we probably won't, we'll, we'll get through a lot of it, but, um, you'll need to do a little bit of work, uh, yourself during the week to, if you want to finish. Um, and then the week after, um, we will be left on our own, uh, to do the next buildings. I think I'm going to do biscuitiers or maybe, well, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but definitely we're going to do Autour de France. Uh, next week. And um, Astrid is going to be joining us from the Netherlands. So any last questions? Oh dear, I might be doing a new craft watercolor. I love the class. Oh, Sue, <laughs> you got to trust me. <laughs> if you like one thing, you're going to like all the things. Um, and that's what's fun about this. But Sue will give you a kit so you can you can um, paint along with us because it is really fun and so, so easy. I mean, look at that background. Took no time. Um, if you did the, if you wanted to do something like the night sky, just use like the purples and the blues instead. And then of course that uh, marker, the white marker I was telling you about, you could go in and put a little few stars or snowflakes. Um, that's the kind of thing that's kind of fun to do afterwards. This was from last session. All right, I could talk uh, and kind of just play all night, but people people are ready to. It's been a long day here at Homemade. Oh, speaking of which, um, we have a little video. It's our grand opening weekend. Um, if you're first joining us at Watercolor Wednesdays, we have a full shop downstairs. Um, we you know we have stuff online too, but um, our shop is having its grand opening event this Saturday. Starts at 10. We've got goodie bags for the first 50 people through the door. And we're going to do it whether it's a blizzard or not. <laughs> so, uh, Karin, you got a little something for us? Let's look.
so fun. There's lots of great fabric. There's some watercolor stuff too. Um, I've got lots of packages of the brush lettering pens down there. Um, if you're looking online at homemade.ca under shop and you search for Tombow dual brush pens, those are the kinds of markers that you can do this kind of writing with. So I'm just going to give you that hot tip right now. If, if you're into those, um, it, they're called the dual, uh, dual tip, dual brush markers from Tombow. They're on the website. We can put a link up. But anyway, um, let us know if you'd like the kit or if you have any questions, you can email us at homemade. No, no. You can email us at info at homemade.ca. All right. Thanks, everybody, for being here. We will see you next Wednesday for class number two. Bye, guys.